do? Live streaming. Um, I want to thank God that you have managed to join us and I want to thank God for your life that he, God has um, allowed us to, uh, to, to be alive today and also for your life that God has allowed you to be alive today. So we really thank God for that and uh, I think it's something which we need to appreciate every time, to appreciate God that uh, God keeps us alive and God always look after us. It's something which you do not take for granted. God um, has uh, allowed you to be alive right now. And uh, you know, many things are actually happening on earth and uh, uh, many people are losing their lives and people are sick. Um, but if God has spared you your life today to hear his word, I think it's something which we need to appreciate God and thank God for, for that. Sometimes we, as people, we, we, we just say um, plan and think tomorrow is coming and things like that. But it's very important that we appreciate God every day and every time he gives us. So that's very important that we, we need to do. Um, so uh, once again, I want to welcome you on this live streaming where we talk about the word of God. But as you are going to hear the word of God, I want you to... Like I said last week, you um, have to understand it from the context that Jesus Christ is coming back. So once we understand it from that context, it means that it gives us a, um, a, something to think about. That if Jesus is coming back, are we prepared? If we done anything or something which he has asked us to do. Because certainly I believe Jesus has asked us to do something or asked us to do something before he left um, this world. So we, we read from the book of uh, Corinthians, uh, sorry, um, Acts chapter 1, where we are talking about uh, um, the Galileans were actually watching as Jesus was going after he had given, given them the instruction that, uh, or the advice that if once the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit will give you uh, power. So uh, as they were standing, the Bible then teaches us that, uh, you know, the, uh, the two men who were dressed in white came and said, you Galileans, why are you standing watching like this? This Jesus who is going, um, he will be coming back in the same, same way. So if he's going to come back in the same way, um, we as the body of Christ or the Christians, we need to think about that, are we, or are we prepared enough? Are we prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ? That's what is important. So when we were teaching last week, we then said, all the teachings we are doing, we need to understand these teachings in the context of the fact that uh, Jesus Christ is going to come back. Because at the end of the day, this is not my work or anyone's work, but it's Jesus' work. So therefore, um, if we don't do this work knowing that Jesus is coming back, it means that, that um, we'll be caught unaware. So which takes me to another point which we need to understand that we as Christians, we are always running out of time. And God has already told us uh, some time back that we are running out of time. So it's for us to think about what should we be doing? Are we using our time effectively? Because most of the time we just think that uh, we have the time, we'll do it tomorrow or whatever it is, we procrastinate. But Jesus is coming. That's the announcement. We need to know that. So whatever the, what we are supposed to be doing, we need to take it serious and we need to do it. And you need to live a life where you live a life of purpose and doing is according to what God says. That's what is very, very important. So my word today is going to, um, to be talking about the importance um, of maturing in Christ or actually uh, maturing in our relationships with um, fellow brethren and also with, with God. Why, how does it help? So it's very, very important. And again, I want us to understand in the context of um, the fact that we have got an instruction which we need to be doing. So we need to know that uh, we have got something which God has asked us to do or Jesus, Jesus has asked us to do. Are we, are we doing that? So our teachings are to do with um, 
we need to prepare ourselves because the, the, the major problem we have is that um, even in, in, a, in a living example, um, if a child does not grow um, and meet certain milestones, it means they won't be able to do certain things. So even in our Christian life, if we just say grow in terms of numbers of years in church, but not really growing and maturing in Christ, it means there are certain things and many things you're not able to do. Because it, um, the work of God is, is, is more about doing rather than just say uh, listening. If we just listen to the word of God and go back home, sometimes it does not help us in any way. But we have to grow into then understanding and our role and then actually then go on executing our role as, if you like, the ambassadors of Christ. Because that's what it is. I'm being an ambassador of Christ. An ambassador represents a country. So if we are ambassadors of Christ, we are representing Christ. So which means we need to be doing what Christ does or what, what Christ himself asks us to do. That's, that is what is very, very important. So it's very, very important um, to understand that whatever we are doing, we are doing it in the context of the coming of Jesus Christ, the coming back of Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us that everyone is going to be judged according to what they have done, whether it's good or bad. So it's very important that we prepare ourselves as the body of Christ or, 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 or as, the, as the children of God. We prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus Christ. So, and I'm also going to uh, ask all those people who uh, teach or lead um, to, to preach the word of God in the context of coming of Jesus Christ. Because the, the, word, the, the word is not for us, but comes from God. And the, the instruction comes from God. So, or whatever we do as Christians, let us understand uh, and let us focus ourselves um, towards the coming of Jesus Christ. That's what is very, very important. So today we are going to talk about uh, so the importance of uh, uh, these relationships and uh, also the importance of you know maturing to um, you know to be the people who then represent Jesus Christ. Now, as so I'm going to read the, the the Bible, it then tells us exactly, and you understand why I I am talking about this because we have got a, a role to play. So we are going to uh, read our first scripture um, from the book of uh, um, from the book of Matthew, and uh, and and uh, understand. Uh, um, I will I will I will read the the Bible. Um, So the Bible, we, let's open our Bibles from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verse 18. So I'll read. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything I have commanded. I have commanded you and I will be with you always to the end of the edge. So, as, as you can all um, appreciate, this is what Jesus is actually saying to his disciples. In other words, that's exactly what Jesus is saying to us as the body of Christ, is the ones who follow Jesus. We are not just following Jesus. It's a, um, we need to understand it from the point of view that we, we follow Jesus as... Um, as, as, as we begin to understand who Jesus is. But not only that, but we have to grow into maturity. And then from that point, we then start to work as ambassadors. But as ambassadors of Christ, we need then to be loyal to him. And uh, the Bible here says, I have been given all authority. So 
in heaven and earth, Jesus was given all authority. So, as he then says that, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So meaning that it's not a, this, this is actually calling us to do something. It's calling for action. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. You know, teaching them what I have taught you. Look, I'm with you until the end of the age. So clearly it means that uh, we have a task. If we are the body of Christ, if we are the children of God, we clearly have a task which God has given us. You see, because most of the time when we are coming to church, we are mostly focusing on ourselves and our needs and what we are looking for and what we are lacking and all that kind of, those kind of distractions. Sometimes we then we are not then able to rise to that level where we then understand what exactly Christianity is all about. In fact, Christianity, Christian, it comes, uh, it comes from the word Christ. And it came about after Jesus Christ actually had left. So those people who were, who were following Christ, Christ were called Christians. So here the Bible says, Jesus is actually teaching, he's now saying that, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them all I have taught you. In other words, teaching them to obey what I have actually taught you. So, meaning that we need to understand that, um, so being Christians, we have got levels um, we, we have in terms of our relationship with, with Jesus. Sometimes we've got a relationship where I have got a need, I want the need to be met. And sometimes we remain at that level where we are only and constantly asking for Jesus or asking for God for my needs to be met. And sometimes you actually get uh, despondent because, uh, you know, my needs has not been met. And uh, sometimes we get frustrated because, uh, you know, I can't achieve this, I can't achieve that. But actually we're missing the point. The point is we have to believe in Jesus accept him as uh, our personal savior have a relationship with him hence we are going through this series of making a relationship with god and then from there you grow into maturity but as you grow into maturity you don't just grow into maturity just like that you're going to have to face challenges and difficulties as you fail for uh, make, make those challenges and difficulties that was then um uh, grooms you to be the person who Jesus wants you to be. I've talked about the child. As the child grow, they grow muscles, they grow, uh, you know, into different stages until they are an adult and they are able to do certain things. So meaning that if we cannot grow to be, uh, uh, to, to be adults to, do, to end up doing certain, certain things, it means that uh, we'll be lacking and we remain, we remain, we remain children or in, in terms of our, our deeds. So, this scripture we have just read, Jesus is get, giving an instruction. And remember, he, he has already done um, all the work. He, he has gone around teaching about love. He has gone around teaching about selflessness. He has gone around teaching about sacrifice because we know ultimately he sacrifices even his life to, um, even for our salvation. You know, so he has demonstrated all these things he talked about, he, he taught us about, you know, being people who are not able to, I mean, people who, who um, are like children, you know, meaning that, you know, people who um, accept to be taught, accept a teaching, because you can only learn when, you, when someone is actually teaching you. So he, he's teaching about all these things, but after all that he has told that, he's, he now says that, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. It's now going, but it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And teach them, Oh, I have taught you, look, I'm with you until the end of the age. So, this task which Jesus is giving us, it calls for maturity. It calls for people who will have genuine relationship with Jesus who are able to stand firm no matter what. 
we are able to stand firm no matter what barriers. We are able to stand firm no matter challenges they may face. Because suddenly, as Jesus was going, these people needed to go again and preach the word and even preach about his resurrection, which was a challenge, quite a challenge at the time because people didn't, didn't believe in resurre resurrection. But they needed to stand firm. They needed to, to really believe. They needed to have a, a relationship with Jesus for them then to stand for him. Because in other words, they were going, God, Jesus is asking us to stand for him. If he say, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, teaching them what I have taught you. It means that we, we should then understand what it is that Jesus has taught us. Which is very contrary to, um, you know, people believing that, you know, Jesus died for us so we can just live by grace. Yes, we can live by grace. But actually, we need to go or to grow into maturity so that we can then be able to take up the task what Jesus is actually asking us to take. All of us as a body of Christ, because that's what the, if we believe in Jesus Christ, that's exactly what Jesus is actually asking us to do. So it's very, very important. Now, the challenge we then face, whether as uh, the body of Christ, as church organizations, as, uh, as, um, as people, is that because we then um, do not focus on what Jesus is teaching us, we focus on very, very local and very minor things. But here, the Bible is teaching us that Jesus has given us a task to go there and make disciples of all nations. But this is not a, a, a small task. It's a big task, which can only be done when people have grown and have been able to uh, deal and, uh, uh, with certain challenges and overcome them. Because obviously, as we are going to go there and preach, we will go and you obviously find negativity or find, you know, you know even people who um, discourage and all that kind of thing. But Jesus is teaching us, or Jesus taught us, that we need to go there and make disciples of all nations. Now, this can only be done when we really have grown away, when we continue to seek uh, to get to maturity. Now, I'm, I'm going to um, read another scripture. But that scripture, I need us to understand, because there are, there are certain things which, which affect us. I said to you already that... Sometimes if we are not growing, it means that we are not able to set and set, um, so take up certain tasks because we have not grown into, um, into the ability to be able to do certain things. So I'm going to just read about um, something. You know, last week I did teach about the fact that, oh, no, I think two weeks ago, I said that in life you need to be a student, also need to be a teacher. Which comes very clear now, as I was saying, because the Bible says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Yeah? It, so if you're going to make a disciple a disciple, it means you also need to know how to be a disciple yourself. So in other words, you need to be a learner. You need to be able to learn something. Because at the time where Jesus was here on earth, he was teaching every time. And he was teaching what needs to be done. He was teaching, uh, you know, even people who already were old. But he had the wisdom of heaven because he was teaching without even going to a theology school or, or whatever. But he was teaching them they needed to understand what he was teaching and come to him for the wisdom and, and, and uh, you know, um, follow what he was actually teaching. So meaning that as a person, you have to be a learner, someone who learns. Someone who will sit down and say, okay, I'm being taught here. I'll learn what, what needs to be taught. Because Jesus, Jesus was teaching every day, every time. As he gathered with people, he will then start to teach. So which means that people needed to be learners, to learn what Jesus was, teach, was, was actually saying. Now listen. Jesus, as he was now going, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now listen. Teaching them what I have taught you. Look, I'm with you until the end of the age. So be a learner, be a teacher. Then you'll be able to carry out whatever Jesus has instructed us to do. 
very very important you need to be a learner to learn to be a disciple to you know to learn what jesus was actually teaching and actually i like um other translation it actually says uh teach them to be, obey what i have taught what i've taught you so which means we ourselves we need to actually be able to obey that which jesus has taught us for us to be able to teach others how to obey so we have to learn and we have to teach it's very very important i want to challenge you if you are someone who who want to keep to yourself and say that as long as i know this this is what god has told me no he wants you to teach someone that's exactly what the bible says and teach them what i have taught you look i'm with you until the end of the age so it's very important. So that's why we are building, we are talking about this, uh, having a relationship with God, but uh, teaching each other to strengthen ourselves into that person who Jesus wants us to be. Because Jesus does not want us to be passive in terms of what we know, but he wants us to actually teach others what we know so that they themselves can also then obey. So that's what's very, very important. So we need to be like models, role models, uh, is the way we live, the way we do what we do, so that others can also learn. Very important. So we are going to go on to our next scripture, and I want us to open the Word of God from the book of Hebrew, which I will also open, um, and we'll read. But what I want us to know about is, um, you know, the importance The importance of growth, growing. So, I mean, if a child remains the same, it does not grow, you know, people, uh, parents become worried because they are actually not achieving certain milestones in their life. It's a worry for any parent. I'll say it's also a worry, it should be a worry for us if we are not growing into maturity because it means that we are not able to do certain things because we are just not growing. We will not be able to achieve that what we want to achieve simply because we are not growing. It's very, very important. Growth mindset is very, very important in any situation. So we are going to read the Bible. And I'm just going to read the, the, the Bible in the book of Hebrews. Just demonstrate that even Jesus was, was also learning. Uh, I'll, I'll read from uh, the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, But even though he was God's son, he learned through his sufferings to be obedient. Even as high as, as the son of God as he was, as even as he knew that he was the son of God, he learned to be obedient still. As he learned to be obedient, he, he obviously it means that you, he, he was learning also from his father. But as he was learning from his father, he was also giving back as a teacher, as teaching also the, the disciples and everyone else who listened to him. So which, which means that being a learner is very important and being a teacher is very important, as I was been saying. But we're going to read now uh, from uh, the same book of um, Hebrews chapter 5, but this time I'm going to read from verse 12. And I want us to, to pay attention. There has been enough time for you to be teachers, yet you still need someone to teach you the first lessons of God's message. Instead of eating solid food, you still have to drink milk. Anyone who has to drink milk is still a child. Without any experience in the matter of right and wrong. Solid food, on the other hand, is for adults who, through practice, are able to distinguish between good and evil. Amen. So, the, the Bible is teaching us here. And this is Paul is actually uh, talking about the people who he actually thought they were... Um, they, they were growing. From the reading, we can actually find out that Paul was actually thinking that these people, because of the time they had, or the time they had known the gospel, and the way they were actually behaving, 
these two were actually not say um, making sense. They were not. They, they were actually behaving as if they were still children, but yet the time they had, by that time they should have grown to another level. But then he says, "There's been time. There's been enough time for you to be teachers. Yet you still need someone to teach you the first lessons of God's message." Now let us just say uh, concentrate on that. So, like, I, like I've been saying, is that like if we remain in the same uh, position, it means that there is a worry, the big worry. It means that it signifies that the future is just not bright. Because what you are yeah, then expected to be doing in future, you won't be able to do it. Here then Paul says that uh, you have been given, you had enough time to be teachers. In other words, he said that uh, by, from the time you have heard the gospel up to the time Paul was, seeing, was actually making these comments, he is expecting the people to have grown into maturity. But to his surprise, he sees that these people still need someone to teach them the very elementary you know, aspects of the Bible or the message. Now, he then goes on to say that if, you, if ch children are the ones who need milk and solid food are only for those who are mature or who are adults. So, meaning that, he, you know, as we grow as children of God, as we continue to worship God, we need to check ourselves to find out whether are we still behaving as children in terms of our faith? Or are we growing up into maturity? From the time you came to know Jesus Christ, have you learned from Jesus Christ so that you can all be, able, be able to deal with certain situations and certain issues? I will give you a very good example. Like, if you came to Christ when you were someone who will be easily angered and someone who will be so harsh and, and things like that, are you still behaving in the same way or you have matured into dealing with those things and be able to um, overcome those things? So in, in, this in, in, in this what Paul is explaining, he's actually explaining about growth in terms of uh, people getting into maturity. Not remaining in the same way in terms of their, their, their spirit. So we ourselves as well as you children of God, we need to rate ourselves and see how we can be able to grow. Because then when you are able to grow, it means then you are able to do what the adults can do. You are able to do what calls in for more muscle. You are able to do what calls in for more challenge. You are able to do, you know, to deal with what calls in for, um, for more effort? That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. So what you find is that, he, you know, as an organization or as a church or as a, as a group of people, if we don't feed ourselves with the word to, into maturity, it means that we are always um, moving around in that circle of just being children in our faith. You see? So it's very important that, you know, we grow into maturity. Then when we grow into maturity, then we start to take responsibility and start to know that, oh, okay, when he says what's going, he says, you know, he has been given all authority. So number one, you know that whatever challenge you face, you know there's one who's got the authority. You know, whatever it is, a barrier you face, you still beyond the barrier because the one you believe in was given all authority, both in heaven and on earth. You know, no matter what challenge you face, you know that God is God. He's above every situation. No matter what it is that you face in your life, you understand that he was given all authority. So there's nothing to worry about because he was given all authority. No situation will intimidate you because you know, they, you know that God was actually gave his son authority both in heaven and earth. And as you believe in the son, and as you believe that he is your personal savior, and as you believe in him and accept him as your, 
uh, as, as the Lord and the personal Savior, in your life, those challenges and those barriers start to become very, very small. Because what is in you is greater than what is in the world. It is about growing, learning what to do, and being able to um, understand that uh, we need to grow to a certain level when we start to deal with certain things. So what Jesus was teaching, um, you see, if we have not grown into maturity, we'll still say it's not, it's not our responsibility. If we have not grown into maturity, we, we ignore that. How do we ignore that? Because we have not grown, we still need the milk. We are not ready for the bones. We are not ready for the bones. That's exactly what the Bible is teaching. That, you know, if we do not grow, we remain children. And if we remain children, we are not able to deal with the bones. And when we are children, we also always have to deal with issues of the children. Because we're not ready for the bonds. You see. So that's why we are teaching about this relationship with God. So that when we have got the relationship with God. When we believe in our God. When we believe in what he has said. It means that you know. We start to believe that you know. His power is above every power. Remember when Paul was teaching. And we've, we've really concentrated on this. When Paul was teaching. Uh, was writing a letter to Timothy. He says. Um, do not forget that we have not been given a spirit of timid, but we have given a spirit of uh, power, self-control, and love. So meaning that we can overcome every situation. With the power of God, we can, we can paralyze the devil in every way or form the devil may come. We, may not, we will not be intimidated by any situation. Why? Because we believe in the power. We believe in what God says to us. You know, you see, at one point, Jesus he said, you know, whoever, he was asked about the, the greatest in the kingdom of God. He says, uh, those who are like the children are great in the kingdom of God. But let's think about the child. A child mostly is very trustworthy. It's very trusting, in other words. So if uh, um, even in the darkness, if you go out with the darkness, they still... As long as you are with them, they know that my, whether my father, whether my brother, whether whatever, is with me. Trust in God. So trust in, 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 in the, the adult they have. Which is what we lack as children of God. Sometimes we lack trust. You see, we lack what, you see, we lack in the belief of what actually God is saying. If Jesus is saying that I've been given all authority in heaven on, on, and on earth, it means that he, <laughs> there's no any other authority. No any other authority. Which is above God. Because it's been, I've been given all authority. But it calls for maturity to, to believe that. It calls for mature Christians to believe that. Because most of the time, when you are in a situation, we are quickly intimidated by that situation. You see, because I am lacking this, I have to run around to go and probably look for a prophet for me. Or look for or whoever to, to help me. But what we are believing, what we are forgetting to believe is that uh, the Jesus you believe <laughs> was given all authority, both in heaven and on earth. And he, say, uh, and he has given us the spirit, then the spirit which is not a spirit of timid, but it's a spirit of power, self-control and love. So my brethren, as you listen to the word of God, I want you to have a rock solid foundation of your worship. Meaning that no any other uh, barrier or situation should move you from your faith. Jesus himself was given all authority both in heaven and on earth. But that can only help you when you believe and when you understand and we are stable in understanding the word of God. Because sometimes we want to achieve this and achieve that. And if you hear that, oh, this prophet is helping with this, you run there. And when you hear that, you know, this one also helping this, you run there. So you will never have a foundation. And you will never have a rock solid foundation. So people who have rock solid foundation, it doesn't matter. You can go through a situation and difficult challenge. But your time will come to be able to overcome the challenge 
but it needs your perseverance. It needs you to stand firm. It needs you to believe. It needs you to trust in God. It needs you to, um, you know, to, to, to be determined. Remember, I've been always talking about the word of God where when God wanted to use Joshua, he says, be determined. And he was giving him that he, he needed to be determined for, he, for God to work with him. It was his responsibility to be determined to, me, to be determined to do the work. That's what God was asking him to do. So sometimes what it is in life is that um, we are not waiting enough to give God a chance to do something in our lives. And uh, um, we want God to do this quick, 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 quick. No. You have to persevere certain things and you have to believe. The Bible says before we open our mouth to say something, God already knows what we want to ask. Seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and everything else will follow. You see, so things will follow you if you are righteous before God. Because that's exactly what we will need to be doing to seek the kingdom of God and to seek the, his righteousness. And everything else will follow. But now today, we are more concerned about, you know, you know about the riches and everything else. It's, it's all right. We, we can do that. You see, what we need to know is that the Bible says in the book of um, the Deuteronomy, which I did mention last week, it says, chapter 8, verse 8, it says, Do not forget, for God is the one who gives the ability to become wealthy. So you can be wealthy if you want, but he, God can, can bless you if you walk in his ways. You can have the, the, the blessing of God. So, so it's very important. But my word today is really to challenge ourselves um, that we don't just continue to go around in circles. We need to grow into maturity and to really appreciate the fact that sometimes, yes, we face challenges. But as we face challenges, we need to stand up for those challenges. If, if, if a challenge, you know, like I, we did mention last week and we, 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 we talked about it, to, to understand relationships, what kind of relationship they are. Because sometimes we then focus ourselves on, you know, trying to change people and trying to do all those kinds. That's not the idea. The idea is to know you, what is your role and what is your purpose and pursue that beyond any barrier. You see, so it's very, very important. But here, the Apostle Paul is teaching the fact that people, you know, they, they, they had enough time to grow, but they have not grown. So I want to challenge you as you listen to the Word of God, how much, how much God has given you time and how much growth you have made. If, if you have not, I think it's time now to really challenge yourself and, and see in your, in your um, in life as a Christian and start to challenge yourself are you growing in any way or are you stagnant? But someone gave an example that he, if a tree starts to stop growing, uh, it says it starts dying. So in your faith, you have to keep on growing. Because when you keep on growing, it means see, you learn more, you meet another challenge, you overcome it, you, you continue to learn, you, know, you, 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 you continue to, to achieve even spiritually. So this is what is very important. Paul then teaches also the fact that it's only um, the it's only the, the, the mature or it's only the adults who will deal with the bonds. So meaning that you, you, you in your life you have to challenge yourself. You don't have to be told by anyone but let's challenge yourself to see that am I, am I, am I an adult or am I still a child? in my faith. What steps can I start to make so that I can be someone who starts to grow in their faith? There are a lot of people who can help. We, we can also help in terms of you know, taking each other by hand and growing in faith. Coming to church every day for 20 years, that, that, that's not a reason to say you are mature. It's about how to deal with certain situations and, and overcoming certain situations. That's also very, very important. Because I can tell you, most of the people, sometimes they don't stop, even stop coming to church simply because someone says this to me. But let me say that if you have grown into maturity, you start to understand that, you know, that situation or whatever the people may say, it may be their, um, their opinion and everything else. 
but as for me, I will keep on coming to church. Because someone says something to you, that has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. God remains God no matter I have been a problem or I have not been in a problem. But God remains God and his power remains his power. So it is that maturity that we need to grow up to so that we are able to deal with certain situations and we are able to achieve and we are able to then to listen to the instruction which Jesus is giving to say, oh, he's telling us now that we need to go there for and make disciples of nations or, or nations and, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them what he has taught us because he is with us until the end of the age. So it takes a, a certain degree of maturity. But otherwise, if we are still children, we will still say that we are not ready for that. Or he's not talking to us. Or he is not, does not mean us. We all can come up with all sorts of, certain of um, a lot of excuses. So my point is, Paul was teaching them that they needed to mature. They should not le um, live in the same way they were. They needed to really, you know, come to a time where they started to understand that they needed to grow into maturity. So as you listen to me today, I need you to challenge yourself and uh, you yourself, are you a child, are you an adult in terms of your, your faith? Are you making any progress in terms of adulthood in your faith? Are you making any progress in terms of um, growing into maturity in terms of your faith? Are you one person who is always discouraged by what people are saying? Because the moment we start to major in minor things, it means that we are losing the plot. If you look at Jesus, he overcame a lot of challenges and situations. And even death, death at the cross. But he did not stop. When you look at the Apostle Paul, the way he was treated and everything else. But he still continued. The disciples, the way they were challenged, uh, sorry, treated, but they continued. And they continued to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what is my point? My point is that we have to grow into maturity. Many people, we may want to, we can quote and we may want to quote and we may want to be like certain um, characters in the Bible, like Paul or, or, or many people. But we want to take the challenge to get, us to, to get us to that level. The challenge is to deal with negativity, to, to deal with challenge, to deal with certain situations, to persevere, to keep on going, to keep on progressing, to keep on learning, to keep on teaching, to keep on being um, you, you know, the ambassador of Jesus Christ. We have to continue to um, to grow in our faith so that we can be able to um, take the challenges which the Bible is teaching us or challenging us to, to take. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. He has been given all authority. So it's to believe that that authority, if I am going to proclaim or if I am going to teach or if I'm going to, I'm not doing it with my own power. Even now as I teach, I'm not doing it with my own power because that's not my work. But it's God's work, but I am working for God. So let us remind each other and let us continue um, to we as individuals. Because what it is, is that if we grow up as individuals, it means that as a group, we can achieve more because we have all grown up. But if we don't grow up as individuals, it means that as a group, we'll still be weak. I'm calling you today and I'm challenging you with this word that go and look at yourself and your faith and see whether are you remaining are you remaining being a child or you are making some steps towards somewhere that's why we're teaching all these uh, series of having a relationship with god because then that that will if we follow that then that will uh, will help us to grow into maturity because if we cannot grow into maturity if we, we lack the love if we are not able to love someone if, you, if people uh, do certain things to you and, and you can't speak to them and you, can't, uh, um, you, you are angry towards them, you can't grow. You can't grow. You know, if, if, if you don't learn to be selfless, you, you can't grow. If you are always wanting, you know, things to happen to you, to, um, you, are, you are only focusing on yourself, even just for, only for praying for yourself, it means that you are not, you are not, growing, you are not growing anyway. So these are the things which you yourself today 
uh, you need to challenge yourself that I want to be, you know, to grow into maturity, to start to take responsibility of what God is saying to me that I need to do. It's very, very important. So I will just say, finish off. Uh, here it then says, um, verse 14. Now, I start from verse 18. It says, anyone who has to drink milk is still a child without any experience of uh, the matter of right or, or wrong. So if we are still children in our faith, it means we are still just dealing with all these things of, for example, you know, we are, we, are, we are just being needy in terms of, oh, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that, you know, you've not got it, so you go on, you go and to, you look for another prophet, you go and look for another one, you chase, you go and look at, no, you have to grow into maturity, understanding the scriptures, and understanding what God is actually saying to you, and master that, and that will take you to another level. Of, of then starting to take responsibility and accepting the challenge or the, the, the task which Jesus is giving you today to go and make disciples of all nations. Verse 14 says, Solid food, on the other hand, is for adults who through practice are able to distinguish between good and evil. So, as the children of God, we need to grow and we need to appreciate the fact that if we are growing, we start to make or start to meet also even maybe, maybe stiffer challenges or bigger challenges. Many people are looking for an ideal life where life is okay, I don't have a challenge, I don't have a, a problem, I'll just come and worship God and I get what I want. But that's never going to be. <laughs> the word of God is encouraging you to understand the word, the word in terms of growing from being a child to adulthood. So in our spirit, we need to also grow from, you know, people who are just knowing uh, Jesus and accepting him as his person, as a personal savior, but also making steps, um, meeting challenging situations, overcoming them, spending time in prayer spending time in prayer and, and helping others you see you grow by helping other people so you grow by also praying for other people don't just spend time lots of time just praying for yourself just praying for other praying for your brethren praying for other other people who uh, may need your your prayer that's 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 very very important because if we do that then it means that we, we are growing we're not looking or focusing on our own personal needs but we are actually uh, focusing on the needs of other people. Remember the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So which means you also love your neighbor. You pray for your neighbor. You pray for your fellow brethren. It's very, very important. So my point today and my word today was really to understand that, uh, um, you know, the, the, there is a task which Jesus has given us. But this task... Um, we often ignore, ignore it, but, but we don't understand why we ignore that. But what I, one of the things we ignore this task is that because we probably we've not really grown into that maturity because we're not ready for the solid food. We're not ready for the challenge. We're not ready um, because maybe, I don't know, maybe it's difficult, maybe whatever it is, but subconsciously we just maybe brush it aside. But it shows something that we have not really grown into maturity. It means that probably we still need some food. We ourselves we still need some, some teachings. We still need some, some very elementary teachings. So my point today is really to understand that, no, even as you receive the Christ as your personal savior, but you need also now to grow and to understand, you know, and really to grow into that level of maturity in your relationships very 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 important because then once you grow to that level then you are able to take up the tasks which Jesus is talking about or which the Bible talks about otherwise when we ignore them it means then that we are not ready for them <laughs> which then the Bible talks about the fact that we are still children we are not ready for the bonds we are not very ready for, for a challenge 
we are, we are still not prepared enough. So th that's, that's my point. So the relationships we, which we're teaching about is to, for us to really grow and really be prepared and really come to maturity so that we are then able to stand firm even for this big task which Jesus asked us to do. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's not possible if we have not grown into maturity because we face challenges. You, 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 it's, it, that on its own already is a task which you are not prepared to take because we still have all these bits and pieces which we have always been talking about or have been teaching to cement our relationship with God so that we can be able to represent him in a good way. There's no ambassador who does not know his country of origin to represent it. You can only be an ambassador once you are mature enough to be able then to go and represent. We cannot be uh, ambassadors of Jesus when we don't know him and we, don't, we are not obedient to his word and we are not following what he says. We can only be ambassadors of Jesus Christ when we start to appreciate the fact that he, Jesus, is the one who has got authority and has been given authority both in heaven and on earth. So my point today is really to, um, to look at the, po at the point why we need to build these relationships and uh, you know, the, to appreciate the importance of these relationships uh, and only in the context of the fact that we need to have, um, we need to grow into maturity, we need to grow into, uh, into adulthood in our spirit. And uh, um, only then we can then be able to stand up for the tasks which God has actually given us to do. So that's my word today. And uh, I want to, you to go and challenge yourself. And go maybe just draw a map and, and see where you, I don't know how many years you've been worshipping God. But maybe they could give us a, a, you know, an audit of your own life or your own faith. To say, okay, I've been here and I've been there. These are the challenges I faced, but I still continued to, you know, to believe in God and trust in God and all that kind of, you can maybe in a way, you'll then be able to challenge yourself and say that maybe these things I am still concentrating on, these are the, they, they need to be done by someone who is still uh, elementary in, 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 their, in their faith. And then maybe you challenge yourself to go to another level until to the level which where you can then now start to represent Jesus. Because by, by so doing, by actually uh, doing what Jesus is saying, is that we are representing him. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we're going to have to grow to that level where we start to appreciate and start to understand that this is our task, both as individuals and as a church, no matter what, ch what church you go to. That's my way today. And uh, continue to, um, to understand that he, G Jesus is the one who was given all authority, both in heaven and on earth. So you should not fear anything if you really believe in Jesus Christ. He, he himself is the one who died for us at the cross that we can also have salvation. And that you should not fear anything why? Because he is God. He's the one who has got authority, both in he heaven and, and on earth. So once once Christians start to understand how powerful they are, or how powerful they can be, it means that that will give us, um, you know, the ability to be able to do certain things, which otherwise we will not be able to, because we now start to believe the power we have, and the power which God continues to demonstrate. To us. So that's my word today and uh, I want us to um, just end with a word of prayer. But uh, um, sometimes you hear the word and it goes, you hear the word and it goes. But I, I want us to challenge ourselves. It's very, very important. Remember last, in, earlier I was talking about that, the fact that we, we, we are running out of time but we don't realize that we are running out of time. What have you achieved in the presence, in, in the presence of God? For God, what have you achieved for him? where you can say that, oh, this person appreciates that I have given him life so that he can do things for me or, 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 or worship me. You see, so we are running out of time. It's now time to act. It's now time to really go there and start to, um, to understand that, uh, you know, we, we, we have to be doing something in the presence of God. 
and really to understand even like I was, we were saying last week that the relationship we have to understand our relationships we spend time being negative about our relationships yet our relationships are the ones who, to help us to go to another level no matter how bad they are because they help us to, to, to grow in our resilience so my word today was, was just to really um, us to understand that and to, to as for us to continue um, to seek to, uh, to grow into maturity, knowing that there are certain things we are not able to accomplish or, or do simply because we are afraid or, or whatever it is, simply because we have not reached that maturity. We are still in the infant's level. So that's my way today and that's my challenge today. That today as you go back home, go there and map yourself and see where you are in your faith. And, and, and start to challenge yourself in terms of growth because you have to grow. You have to grow to, a, to another level. You can't remain at the same, same place. But as I end this word, I want us to pray. But your prayer is just say you want to act on the word. It's very, very important to act on the word. So we're all going to bow our heads as we pray. And, uh, um, and just seek the ability, because remember we're talking about the authority, the power, you know, to be able to do certain things. If you just hear the word of God and don't put it into practice, it's like uh, the word is just gone. And we, we, we spend quite a lot of, long, long time when we're talking about the parable of a sower, what kind of soil and, and that kind of uh, um, people who hear the word of God and does not put it into practice. So let us bow our heads. As you pray, you pray yourself that uh, God help me that I can grow into maturity and really to look into yourself. Sometimes we as human beings, what we can do, we, what we do that we can't challenge ourselves. Or we can't introspect, we can't look into ourselves. Everything else which happens, we tend to blame other people. But today, look at yourself, challenge yourself. Map your faith and see where, whether you are growing, whether you are stagnant, but seek to grow into maturity so that you can be able then to deal with challenging situations. And in this case, to be able to deal with the task which Jesus give, gave us. So let us all bow our heads as we pray to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus as we... Um, pray for the word we pray that your children shall shall grow to maturity in their lives and in their worship and in their faith we pray today that we have us hearing the word that they may challenge themselves that they may grow into maturity that they may not remain like children in their faith but they shall grow to reach to another level where they can start to accept your tasks which you have given I pray that, Father God, that they may continue to seek to be adults in their faith so that they will be able to deal with challenging situations and challenging tasks. We thank you. We glorify your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we thank God today and we thank you for your listening. Uh, as we continue to be in the lockdown, uh, I want us to continue to seek God, continue to pray. Um, and continue to build a solid relationship with God, uh, even based on what we have always been teaching. And uh, we are going to go further, and it's going to be exciting because we are going to talk about uh, um, certain things also and, and certain levels when why we need to continue to build this relationship with, with God. So tune again next week and uh, do not miss out and continue to um, tell us where you are logging in from. Um, thank you for listening and uh, um, for more um, teachings, please join us and uh, um, share this word with other people, share the word with the brethren, share with all your contacts. That's how we can spread the word of God. It's very, very important. Listen, the Bible story is saying that go and make disciples of all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So... When you also just share your, your, the word with your fellow brethren or your fellow friends, you are in a way also just uh, um, sending the message across. It's very, very important. So we thank you for listening and uh, um, we meet again next week and may God continue to bless you abundantly. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <music>